Good afternoon, everyone. You're welcome to the IEP UCC webinar series for the month of May. Even though today is 1st of June, it's still the May edition. So I say happy new month to all of us. So I can see that we still get we're getting people to sign on. So just give them a few minutes, then we can start our session for today. Thank you for your patience and thank you for logging in early. The next five minutes will be awesome. Thank you very much.
So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to the IEPA UCC webinar series for the May edition. Today we are going to look at the topic, Digital Technologies for Teaching and Learning, a must for 23rd century education. For those of us who joined last month's uh, webinar series, realize that we struggled a bit with technology, and I promise that we're going to talk about technology. And I'm happy to say that I had a willing resource person who is an expert in her field to share her insight on digital technology for teaching and learning. In a few minutes, I'm going to share her profile. Yeah. But for the benefit of those of us who might be joining us for the first time on this webinar, my name is Nana Ipwa Roxon. I'm the head of communications and public relations at IEPA, and I'm going to moderate this webinar. I would give you a brief introduction of who we are at IEPA, then how this webinar is going to go. Then I'll introduce our, our speaker for today, then give her the platform for her to do her presentation, then after that we'll have our question and answer. So who are we at IEPA? IEPA, which stands for the Institute for Educational Planning and Administration, was established in August 1975 based on the joint agreement between the government of Ghana and UNESCO UNDP to build and strengthen capacity in educational planning and administration of experts and non-experts and to inform educational policy formulation and implementation through research. And this has been the core of what the Institute does for the past 20, for the past 45 years in council. In November 2020, IEP officially became a UNESCO Catholic Center for Excellence for West Africa. And this was launched by the Honorable Minister for Education in June 2021. So as a UNESCO Category 2 Center, IEP is to, among other things, build capacity of the workforce in the education sector, in the West African subregion, in the areas of educational planning, leadership and administration as well as mobilize international and regional experts to provide technical assistance and policy advice to support sector-wide planning and policy development. So this webinar series is one of such events that we use to build capacity geared towards SDG4. I entreat all of us to go to the IP website to learn more about what we do if you want further information. So, Discussing the topic for us today, which is digital technologies for teaching and learning and must have been first century education. As a woman who I know rough shoulders with men, because when it comes to technology, and so recently it was a man's world, she's an expert in herself. She's in the person of Dr. Valentina Akofo. He's a senior lecturer at the College of Distance Education, CODE, at the University of Cape Coast here. And she facilitates courses in technology integration in education, such as learning theories for teaching and training with technology, modalities for teaching and training with technology, assessment strategies using ICT, computers in education, databases and management information systems. Dr. Akofu holds a PhD in educational technology and is currently on another PhD in open distance learning at the University of South Africa. She also holds a master's degree in information technology education from this university, University of Cape Coast. Professionally, she holds a certificate in faculty online teaching from Ghana Technology University and a certificate in designing and facilitating e-learning from the Open Polytechnic University of New Zealand. Her research interests are in the areas of ICT integration in teaching and learning, gender adoption of technologies in teaching and learning, 
and e-learning assessment and strategies in education using ICT. He has over 30 publications in refereed ISI Scopus Journal with reputable publishers such as LBF, Taylor and Francis, among others. He also serves as the international reviewer for ISI Scopus International Refereed Journal. Her main competencies include learning management system, user interface design, interactive content creation for e-learning, and online facilitation. Her expansive and rich work experience covered also, covered also serving as a coordinator for e-learning and a departmental registration officer at Code UT. She's also a chief examiner at the Institute of Education and an affiliate at the Center for Gender Research Advocacy and Documentation Center. Here at his distinguished participants, this is a resource person for today. Beautiful woman with brain, as you can see on the screen. So I'm going to give her the space to uh, tell us what it all means when it comes to this topic on the dissertation and learning. But let me just remind us that if you want a certificate for this uh, webinar, which you can use for your um, continuous professional development, you can send me a message in the chat box or you can send us an email. And it's, it, the certificate is called 100 Gamma Cities and you can pay by Vodafone Cash to 050 1029 and the cell number is 374145. The name on the account is IEP UCC. I believe we all registered for this webinar. So if after the webinar you, you decide that you want a certificate, you can use the same email address that confirmed your registration and tell us that you want a certificate for this topic, and we will contact you and do it for you. So, ladies and gentlemen. I'm all poised to learn more about how we're going to incorporate digital technologies for teaching and learning in this 21st century world that we are in. And at this juncture, I hand over to Dr. Valentina Akofi to share her slides and tell us what we should know. Doc, you're welcome. Doc, I think you're muted because I can hear you. Hello. Is it okay now? Yes, I can hear you now. Sure. I was using an earpiece and so, all right. Um, good afternoon, honorable members. Good afternoon. Yes, my name is Valentina. And I'm privileged to be, to be the speaker for today's webinar series. And of course, I want to express my gratitude to the director and staff of IEPA for providing me with this opportunity to share knowledge on this platform. And I would also like to extend my thanks to the director of SEGRAD, Dr. Mrs. Georgina Drew, and Mrs. Ifwa Roxon for their support. And so today, I'll be discussing digital technologies for teaching and learning, a must for 21st century education. And I chose this topic because I believe that as part of our commitments to the Sustainable Development Goals, that is the SDGs, educators can create dynamic learning environments, incorporating multimedia resources, and then facilitating active student participation. So, um, will you share your slides or I should share yes, it from I will. here? I will share the slides. 
Thank yes, you. I, I, I will get there. Thank you very much. And so the sustainable development goals are a set of 17 global goals that are established by the United Nations. That was in 2015. And they aim to address various social, economic, and environmental challenges. And they guide countries towards sustainable development by the year 2030. And this is directly linked to education and digital technology in teaching. And so the SDG4, that is quality education, aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. It emphasizes the importance of access to quality education, the development of relevant skills, and the use of technology to enhance learning outcomes. And so digital technology in teaching plays a significant role in advancing the SDG4 through the following ways. That is through access to education, where we overcome the barriers to education by providing access to learning materials, online courses, and then educational resources, especially in underserved areas or regions. And then also the second way is quality learning experiences. And so this way facilitates personalized and adaptive learning it enables multimedia content and offers simulations and virtual reality experiences that can enhance understanding and knowledge retention. And the third way is the teacher professional development. Digital technology supports teachers professional development by providing access to online training, collaborative platforms and resources, that enhance teachers' teaching experiences and practices and enables them to create interactive lessons, monitor students' progress, and provide timely feedback. The fourth way is inclusion and equity. And this allows for flexible learning environments, accommodates different learning styles and needs, and then support students with disabilities through assistive technologies. And the fifth way is lifelong learning. Technology enables lifelong learning by providing opportunities for continued education and skill development. So we look at online courses, the e-learning platforms, and the digital resources that allow individuals to acquire new knowledge and skills through their life, adapting to changing employment requirements. Then the sixth way of the SDG4 is that digital technology facilitates data collection and analysis. It helps identify learning gaps, measures progress, and improves educational outcomes through evidence-based decision-making. And so by leveraging digital technology in teaching, the SDG4 aims to ensure that all individuals access to quality education. The integration of digital technologies in teaching also aligns with the SDG 8. And this fosters sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, as well as promoting full and productive employment and decent work for all. And so by incorporating digital tools and resources in education, students gain the necessary digital skills and knowledge for future job opportunities. And so digital technologies provide opportunities by breaking down geographical barriers and enabling remote work and online learning. Moreover, these technologies enhance skill development through interactive and engaging learning experiences, empower, empowering students with the competencies required in the digital economy. And so by fostering 
entrepreneurship and innovation. These technologies help create pathways for individuals to access quality education. And so seniors and police, by raising this awareness, we can explore and utilize online learning platforms, virtual classrooms, and educational applications to extend educational opportunities beyond the traditional classroom. Students can develop critical thinking, information literacy, and digital citizenship skills that are crucial in today's technology-driven society. And so by incorporating this into teaching practices, we can create a more dynamic and stimulating learning environment that captures students' interest and encourages active participation. Moreover, the use of the tools in teaching helps prepare students for the digital age. By familiarizing them with technology and digital problem-solving strategies, we equip them to be adaptable, lifelong learners who can navigate and thrive in a technology-driven society. And so in today's interconnected world, it is essential for educators to embrace digital technologies and leverage their potential to enhance teaching and learning experiences. And through this webinar, I hope to provide valuable insights that will empower educators to integrate digital tools effectively. Let's embark on this journey together and then explore the exciting possibilities that digital technologies offer in this 21st century. You all agree with me that in recent years, Ghana has been embarking on efforts to integrate digital technologies into the education system. The government has recognized the potential of technology to enhance teaching and learning outcomes. Some initiatives have been undertaken to promote the use of digital technologies by teachers. And of course, the Ghana Education Service has been working on providing teachers with training on using digital technologies in the classroom. And this includes programs that focus on digital literacy and the effective integration of technology in teaching practices. The government has also done a lot in investing in improving infrastructure and connectivity in schools, especially in the rural areas. And efforts have been made to provide schools with electricity, computers, and internet connectivity to facilitate the use of digital technologies. And several e-learning platforms have been developed to support teachers and students in Ghana. For example, the Ghana Learning TV that shows on channels, different channels, TV channels in Ghana, the e-campus platforms that were launched to provide educational content and resources to students and teachers. And that was during the COVID-19 pandemic. Efforts have been made to develop and distribute digital content and resources for teachers in Ghana. And these resources include digital textbooks, educational softwares, and online learning materials that can be used to supplement classroom instruction. And these various partnerships and initiatives have been established to support the integration of digital technologies in Ghana. And so for instance, organizations like the Ghana India Kofi Annan Center of Excellence in ICT and the Ghana Investment Fund for Electronic Communication, that's the GIFEC, have collaborated with the government to support training and resources to schools and teachers. And so the integration of digital technologies also aligns with efforts to promote STEM education, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in Ghana. And so by utilizing these digital tools, teachers can create interactive and engaging experiences that foster interest and proficiency in these subjects. And despite all these efforts, challenges still remain. Despite all these efforts, we encounter a lot of challenges. 
And so during the COVID-19 pandemic, educational institutions faced numerous challenges and disruptions. The shift to remote learning highlighted the existing inequities in access to technology and the internet connectivity. Remote learning limited the direct interaction between the teachers and students and the absence of face-to-face -face communication and physical presence in the classroom affected student engagement, personalized support, and the ability to address individual learning needs. And teachers had to find new ways. Teachers had to find new ways to connect with students and maintain a sense of community. And so with students learning from home, parents and guardians played a more significant role in supporting their children's education. And they had to navigate new digital platforms, assist with technical issues, and provide additional guidance. And this situation highlighted the importance of collaboration between parents and teachers. And so teachers had to rapidly adapt to remote teaching methods, often requiring upskilling in technology and online instructional practices. Professional development opportunities were also provided to help educators gain the necessary skills and knowledge to deliver effective virtual instruction. And the shift to remote learning necessitated changes in assessment and grading practices. Teachers had to modify assessments to ensure fairness and integrity. Educators explored alternative assessment methods including project-based assessments, online quizzes, portfolio evaluations, and this actually led to the achievement of learning outcomes. And so when technology is appropriately integrated into teaching practices, it has the potential to enhance student engagement. I would like to share some technology quotes with you. And the first one is by David Warlick. And he says that we need technology in every classroom and in every student and teacher's hand because it is the pen and paper of our time. And it is the lens through which we experience much of our world. And then the second quote is by Jenny, Jenny Alec. And she says, technology can become the wings that will allow the educational world to fly further and faster than ever before. That is if we allow it. And so I'd like to share my screen so that we start the business for the day. All right. So, oh. yes, I'm here. Are you okay? Yo. Oh, yes, I've shared my screen. I think it's showing right now, isn't it? Yes, it's showing right it now. Up? Thank you very All much. Right. Yeah. Yo. I would like to take you through the outline of the presentation and we're going to look at the adoption of digital technologies and achieving the sustainable development goals. 
And then the barriers that hinder adoption of digital technologies in education. And then digital education or digital technologies a must for adoption in education. And this is what drove the selection of this topic for this webinar series. And then considerations for the adoption of digital technologies, the role of government in the adoption, selecting a digital technology to align with instructional goals and learner needs, and then the steps in incorporating digital technologies in the classroom. What is showing on the screen is the global goals for sustainable development. And we refer to them as the SDGs. And they have a very strong connection to education in Ghana, particularly in relation to the adoption of digital technology. The SDG fours focus on ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education. That is the one that directly links to digital technologies. And so the SDG four, and Ghana can leverage digital technologies to enhance teaching and learning process. That is according to the SDG four, improve access to quality educational resources, and then promote interactive and engaging learning experiences that will contribute to the development of digital literacy skills among students and teachers, preparing them for the digital age. The SDG five, that is the uh, gender and equality, digital technology adoption in education, to advancing gender equality in Ghana. And so by promoting equal access to digital resources, training and opportunities, technology adoption can empower girls and women in education. It can help overcome gender disparities by providing girls with digital skills, access to online educational content and opportunities for virtual learning. And the SDG 8, this is the SDG 8, that is decent work and economic growth, focuses on integrating digital skills into the curriculum to equip students with the needed skills for the modern workforce. And this prepares our future leaders for future employment opportunities and fosters economic growth by creating a digitally skilled workforce that can contribute to Ghana's digital economy. And the SDG 10 on the screen is about the reduced inequalities, reduced inequality. And so by ensuring equal access to digital tools, devices and internet connectivity, technology adoption can bridge the gap between the rural and urban areas, reducing the disparities in access to quality education. And so efforts can be made to reach marginalized communities, such as those in remote areas or low income backgrounds and provide them with equal opportunities for digital learning. The SDG 16 and 17 also have a link with digital adoption. The 16 talks about peace and justice. And of course, by providing access to digital and educational resources, we have the advantage of promoting peace, justice, and strong institutions. Technologies can support inclusive and equitable education that foster dialogue, that foster intercultural understanding, that foster global citizenship, promoting peaceful and inclusive societies. And the 17 highlights the because 
education requires collaboration among the government, private sector, and then educational institutions and civil society organizations. And these partnerships can be formed to provide resources for infrastructure and the training for digital technology integration in our classroom. And so collaboration can also involve knowledge sharing, capacity building, and the development of solutions. Digital technologies refer to the various tools that utilize digital, uh, what that process, store and transmit and manipulate data, such as computers, and then the smartphone. We can also talk about the tablets that we use. And I'm sure a lot of us are using these devices. But you know, digital technologies can be categorized under different types. And the types are computers and software. That is the personal computers that you are using, the laptops. Many people are using different types of laptops with different processing power, the servers that we use in our institutions and the software programs that enable processing, uh, graphic design, programming. These are softwares that we are using everywhere in different organizations. And then we can also talk about the internet and networking that connects computers and enables communication, where we share data and online services. And this includes the websites, the websites, the email, use email for sending um, uh, letters. We share information on social media platforms and we use cloud computing services. We can also talk about the mobile devices, the tablets, the smartphones, you know, they offer a wide range of functionalities such as internet access and then the mobile applications and the multimedia, multimedia capabilities. And so sometimes I sit down and wonder why the Ghana Education Service does not allow our students to use mobile phones. My daughter is in the senior high school and every time she comes home, she's using the device for searching on the internet to access information. But when they go back to school, they are not allowed to hold phones. I think that we should rethink this. We should have a relook at this. When there are a lot of functions on the mobile phone that our students can use. And so I hope that if we have um, GES management on this platform, they can also relook at this because I feel uh, we are doing injustice to our students. Artificial intelligence, that is machine learning, AI. These technologies enable computers to perform tasks that require human intelligence. The computer is not a human being, but it can be customized. It can be programmed in such a way that it can do natural language processing, and it can even take decisions. And this is all the power of digital tools. And so this time around, we are using chat GPT. I don't know whether you've had that opportunity to use chat GPT. That is a natural language processing tool that has been developed for research, for discussions. It can stimulate critical thinking, and even support language learning. And of course, on the UCC lecturers platform, I remember an article was sent. It was shared on the platform and I read it and it was talking about how chat GPT can be used to you know, generate multiple choice questions. And of course I tried it and I wanted to share what I saw with uh, colleagues on the platform. And so I'll stop sharing and quickly uh, share what we did.
Yes, I'd like to show the slide for the chat GPT. And then. Okay. All right, I have it now. This technology is so interesting. Please, I hope you, see, you, you can see the screen and what I'm about to do. The article that I read was actually trying to explain how chat GPT can be used to generate questions. Um, I tried typing generate, I want to, I want to try generate 10 multiple questions, multiple choice, sorry, multiple choice questions on the addition of, let's say, two decimal fractions. And so, I hit the button and look at what is happening. It is generating a lot of questions here. What is the result of adding 0 0.35 and etc. So this is what chat GPT is doing nowadays. And educators are harnessing the power of chat GPT I read this about two days ago and I tried it and I told myself that, wow, this is really going to help us in education. And so let's explore these opportunities. All right, and so I'm clicking on the stop generating. And so it will stop generating. And I'm sure that with this, we know that technology is the way to go. Technology is the way to go. All right. And so there are other AI chat tools that a lot of people are using, teachers and I mean, individuals, the chat bots, virtual assistants and uh, sentiment analytics tools. All these are examples of AI. And so AI will soon be taking over the world, trust me. And if you are an educator, you ask yourself that, where will you be? All right. The learning management system is a platform like Moodle. The University of Cape Coast is using Moodle. And then also we have platforms like Google Classroom and then Canvas, all these platforms help in communication between educators and students. We also have video conferencing tools like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, and I'm sure today what you're experiencing right now is the use of Zoom. During the COVID, we're using Zoom to discuss lessons with our students. And then also we can talk about the educational applications and software. And these apps helps in various subjects. I have had the opportunity to use a software that taught me how to speak Zulu language that is in Southern Africa. And I was able to learn a few words because that was uh, designed to teach people how to speak the language. And of course, I can be proud and say that I was able to learn a few things. And so we can harness these educational applications in mathematics, in English language, and other areas. And then also, we can also um, talk about the gamification tools. Gamification tools, that is the softwares 
that have game elements. Softwares that have game, game elements. And when the students are engaged in the game, they learn through interactivity and then they learn through competition. And so these tools can be used at the lower level, basic education, where we have to encourage our pupils to use a lot of games to learn, and they are available. We have to harness them. And then also we can talk about the collaborative tools, collaborative tools like Google Docs and Padlet. There are a lot of um, collaborative tools, but then these tools encourage active participation and critical thinking skills. We also have the personalized learning software. And these ones also help to track students' programs, uh, progress, allowing students to work at their own pace and focus on areas where they need more support. So it's a form of um, individualized instruction and practice based on a student skill and then learning pace. These are technologies that we can explore as educators. And then we can also look at multimedia creation tools, the tools that enhance critical thinking, communication, allowing students to express their ideas and knowledge in engaging and interactive format. Online assessment platforms, how to assess our students via quizzes, via e-projects. You know, we can use some of the uh, uh, assessment platforms like Kahoot. There are a lot of them. These are just a few. And then online content libraries, like the website, Khan Academy, uh, TED-Ed, we have open educational resources or repositories that offer a vast collection of educational videos, articles, lesson plans, and resources that educators can integrate in their instruction. Internet of Things blockchain, cloud computing, virtual reality, big data analytics. And these are all digital technologies. Big data analytics, techniques and tools to process and analyze large volumes of complex data to extract meaning. Cybersecurity, we have to protect our data. We have to protect our systems. We have to protect from unauthorized attack. No matter what, there will be hackers, people who will hack into our systems. And so let's protect our systems. The barriers to the adoption of technology in the has been the problem that affects education. We are education problems. But barriers have been worrying institutions. And of course, over the years, we have been facing barriers that have to do with infrastructure, access, affordability, capacity building, and cultural factors. And so the availability and affordability of devices such as computers, laptops, tablets, and smartphones has become a challenge. How many of our students own these? And how many teachers even have laptops or tablets? And so it becomes very difficult to utilize digital technologies effectively for learning purposes. And so there is that unequal access to devices that actually creates problems and exacerbates the digital divide between the, let's say the urban and then the rural areas. And then also the cost of even acquiring these devices or the educational software. I've said a lot, I've mentioned a lot of softwares, but the question is how affordable are they? How affordable are they? Because limited financial resources and the need for continuous update creates financial barriers to the adoption of digital technology. 
it's a very big barrier that needs to be solved. And then limited access to even reliable electricity at times. Doom so in some part of you know, Ghana, and then internet connectivity issues. And of course, many schools in the rural areas lack the necessary infrastructure to support the use of digital technologies in education. And so these challenges hinder the adoption of technologies. And then capacity building. You know, the lack of digital literacy skills among teachers, among administrators is a barrier. Many educators in Ghana may not be adequately trained to integrate technology into their teaching practices. The need for comprehensive professional development programs is necessary and crucial for effective implementation. Cultural factors also come into play, the attitudes and beliefs. The traditional method, teachers prefer traditional methods of teaching. And is it helping us? Why don't we blend? And so there may be resistance to change and the lack of awareness about the potential benefits of digital technologies in improving learning outcomes. There's policy and regulatory challenges, inadequate policy frameworks, and limited regulatory support for digital education. And so there's the need for clear guidelines, standards, and regulations for the adoption. Many education stakeholders in Ghana, the teachers, administrators, policymakers, and parents may have limited awareness. They may have limited awareness and can result in resistance to change. You can also talk about the inadequate technical support, limited access to multimedia. If the multimedia resources are not available, how will te teachers employ the digital tools? Data security and privacy concerns, I've talked about the cost constraint of. And so it is a must that we integrate digital technologies into education because they have the potential to enhance educational experiences, facilitate access to information, and even foster collaboration and personalized learning. So there are two roles of digital technologies in education. And that is the reason why, or that is what informed the choice of this topic. Enhancing engagement and interactivity. Digital technologies provide interactive and multimedia learning experiences, making educational processes engaging through videos, games, simulations, and interactive tools. Students are able to understand our lessons better. And I may ask this question, how many of us have been using videos in our lessons for our students to be able to improve on their knowledge retention? The internet, for instance, offers a wealth of educational resources, e-books, online libraries, educational websites, and the open educational resources. And you know, integrating these technologies helps students to break geographical barriers. So digital technologies enable adaptive learning, where educational content and activities can be tailored to meet the student's needs and the learning style. And so this personalized approach allows students to learn at their own pace. If you are in a traditional classroom, you have to depend on what the lecturer or the teacher tells you. But then if you're online, you can study at your own pace. And that's how come we refer to the asynchronous mode of learning. You have the synchronous and then the asynchronous. And so let's explore these two. Digital technologies help essential skills, problem solving, critical thinking, collaboration, you know, and how to navigate online. The University of Cape Coast has adopted the learning management system and our students navigate the platform. And these skills through digital technology are acquired. And so 
in today's digital world, proficiency in using technology is essential for self-directed learning, empowering and then also enhancing teachers' effectiveness. We have to prepare our students today for digital research. And then also prepare our educators professionally through online courses, webinars, and virtual practice so that they enhance their skills and then they stay updated and collaborate with peers globally. Who are the stakeholders and how will they benefit from the adoption of digital technology? And these stakeholders are key in education. We can talk about our students who are the primary beneficiaries of the adoption of digital technologies. They gain access to interactive and engaging learning experiences they gain access to a wealth of educational resources. And digital technologies empower students to take control of their learning and then to develop critical thinking skills and prepare them for the future. And then educators, teachers, we benefit from the integration of digital technologies by gaining access to innovative teaching tools, resources, and platforms. And these tools streamline administrative tasks, facilitate assessment, and even feedback processes that enhance instructional effectiveness. And so, the teachers can benefit from these. Parents and families. In Ghana, do we involve parents and families? Do we actually engage them in the lives of our students? Because online classes and communication platforms can even allow parents to track their child's progress. The learning, management, that's the learning management system that we are using here at the University of Cape Coast can get some features attached to it that can enable even parents to track the performance of their wards. And so we can harness all these for our parents to support their children, not only in higher education, but in the secondary schools, in the primary schools, everywhere, at every level of education. And then also, educational institutions are also stakeholders. The schools, colleges, and universities also benefit from the adoption of digital technologies by also improving on their operational efficiency, enhancing teaching and learning outcomes, and, explaining, um, and expanding access to education. And so digital technologies can also streamline administrative processes, optimize resource allocation, and provide opportunities for online and distance learning. Institutions should embrace digital technologies to even attract and retain their students and enhance their reputation and stay competitive. Otherwise, other institutions will overtake you. We are always in competition and technology will bridge that gap. Governments. Governments are also stakeholders. They are, you know, government and policy makers. They also benefit from digital technology. Digital technology supports the implementation of educational policies and initiatives, facilitate data-driven decision-making, and enable um, efficient monitoring and evaluation of educational programs. And so governments also benefit from the potential of economic growth and the innovation that results from a digitally skilled workforce. If we don't train our students, then we are not going to get the outcomes that we want because in this 21st century, we want a digitally skilled workforce. We can also talk about the employers and industry that help to develop that skilled workforce. And so by integrating you know, the digital skills into the curriculum, Educational institutions contribute to producing graduates with necessary digital literacy and competencies for various sectors. The technology providers, that is the companies and the organizations that provide educational technology 
solutions. They also um, are our stakeholders. They are stakeholders and they increase demand for digital tools, platforms, and resources, creating the opportunity to offer their products and services. And the considerations for the adoption of digital technologies in Ghana is key. We need to carefully think about this. We need to carefully think about this. the considerations, the infrastructure. Adequate infrastructure is crucial in the successful adoption of digital technologies. The, available, uh, the avail availability of internet connectivity. And then prioritizing investment in improving infrastructure, particularly in the rural areas. And then the technical support, which is also key. Technical support and maintenance of the infrastructure, that is the digital infrastructure. Educational institutions should have access to technical expertise and resources to address hardware and software issues. The hardware and softwares that we use need maintenance. And so we need the experts to handle that. And then access and equity, ensuring digital technologies bridge the digital divide. Efforts should be made to provide devices and internet connectivity to all students, regardless of their geographical location or socioeconomic background. There should be special attention that should be given to marginalized groups, including those in the rural areas, and then students with disabilities. We have to help students with disabilities by providing them with assistive technologies. And then also, effective integration of digital technologies require equipping teachers and educators with the necessary digital literacy skills. Comprehensive and ongoing professional development programs should be provided to enhance educators' competency in using digital tools or designing effective online learning experiences. We should leverage digital resources for even assessment. We have to try as much as possible to harness and leverage on the resources for assessment. And then the affordability of digital technologies is critical. Efforts should be made to ensure that the cost of these devices, the software and internet connectivity is reasonable. Students can't even buy data. They are supposed to access the learning management system in your institution. But do they have access to data to even access the learning management system? And so sustainable funding models should be established to support the long-term implementation and maintenance of digital initiatives in education. Policy and governance, clear policies and guidelines for the adoption of digital technologies is important because these policies should be able to address issues such as the data privacy, security, data privacy and security, and even quality assurance. And so there should be collaboration among government bodies, educational institutions, and other stakeholders for effective policy and development implementation. We can also establish mechanisms for monitoring and evaluating the impact of digital technologies in education. Regular assessment of the effectiveness of digital initiatives can inform future decision making and also identify areas of room for improvement and ensure that the digital technologies align with educational goals and priorities. And so cultural considerations should also be taken into account. Engaging with local communities, involving parents, you know, addressing cultural sensitivities, um, you know, uh, that will facilitate acceptance and meaningful engagement with digital tools, and then collaboration. 
collaborations and partnerships with stakeholders, rural stakeholders, educational institutions, technology providers, and civil society organizations. And so partnerships can leverage resources, they can leverage expertise and experiences, address challenges, and promote sustainable digital initiatives. The government has a very big role to play. Colleagues and seniors, the government has a very big role to play when it comes to digital technology. The government should develop comprehensive policies and plans that prioritize the integration of digital technologies. And these policies should provide guidance on infrastructure development, digital resources, and that is the access to digital resources and the digital literacy training for teachers, you know, data privacy. And so these policies should be designed in collaboration with the relevant stakeholders, taking them into account all the best practices. And the government should invest in improving infrastructure, especially in rural and underserved areas. And this is so crucial, where there is no uh, electricity supply, where there is no internet connectivity. It becomes a problem for educators. And so establishing computer labs or mobile computing facilities in schools, or even public-private partnership can also be explored to accelerate infrastructure development. And then the government should allocate adequate funding for the procurement of um, software licenses, internet connectivity, and then special attention, again, should be given to schools in marginalized areas. Schools, there should be equitable access to digital technologies, and the government should invest in comprehensive professional development programs for teachers and educators. Training should focus on the integration of technology in teaching and learning and how to use it, utilize the digital resources and tools. Collaboration with teacher training institutions and then educational organizations can help facilitate building initiatives. Partnerships and collaborations should also be taken into consideration. That is how it will help stakeholders, let's say the relevant stakeholders, including the technology providers and then international agencies, so that we leverage on expertise, resources, and experiences to support the adoption of digital technology, uh, digital technology. And then research, research is key. Many a times we do research and they are lying somewhere. We have to do more research. The government should promote research to assess the impact and effectiveness of digital technologies in education. And this includes monitoring and evaluation. We have to, we have to evaluate um, implementing digital initiatives, measuring learning outcomes, and gathering information from students, teachers, and even parents. And the research findings can inform evidence-based decision-making. And then the government should promote Digital citizenship education to equip students with the necessary skills and knowledge to navigate the digital world safely and then establish mechanisms to ensure data privacy and protection in educational settings. The government should establish mechanisms for monitoring and regulating the quality of education resources, the platforms, and the services. And then awareness and awareness campaigns should be launched to promote the benefits of digital technologies in education. That engages the public. Parents should not be left out. Communities should not be left out. And the educational institutions. And so these campaigns can help build support. These campaigns can help build support and then it will help in the adoption of digital 
technologies. Um, we talked about the stakeholders when it comes to the adoption of digital technologies. And of course, I would say that the most important stakeholder is the student. And so we have to consider how we can select technologies to align with instructional goals. And the first step is to clearly identify the instructional goals that the teacher or the educator wants to achieve. And then also we have to evaluate the available digital technologies. Once you have identified your instructional goals, then of course you have to evaluate the available digital technology that can support your goals. We have to assess the features of the technology. We just don't go choosing a technology. You have to choose the technology that will support your instructional goal. Choose the technology that best aligns with your instructional goal. And then implement the technology by evaluating its effectiveness in meeting your instructional goals. And that is the reason why there is the need for us to also um, include instructional designers in whatever we do. Instructional designers have to be employed in every institution at the basic level, at the senior high school level, and then the tertiary. And as an educational technologist, I'm emphasizing on this because instructional designers, they help in curriculum design and then content development. And they also collaborate with subject matter experts to develop instructional materials. Many at times, educators or teachers leave instructional designers out. And so it is important to work hand in hand with them so that they will assist in the selection and employment of appropriate instructional strategies and methods that are based on the goals. And these strategies may include the use of simulations or e-learning models and more. And so when it comes to technology, integration or collaboration and communication, let's not leave the experts out. And that is the instructional designers because they can go a long way to even help in choosing engaging learner-centered experiences. And so I urge all institutions to employ instructional designers. The adoption of digital technologies in Ghana requires digital citizenship, monitoring and regulation. I've talked about the instructional designers and then awareness and um, outreach. And so when we are selecting a technology to align with instructional goals, the first step is to clearly identify the instructional goals that you want to achieve. This is the instructional goal, be it English language, mathematics or whichever subject area, we need to identify the goal. And then once you've identified your instructional goal, the next step is to evaluate the available technology, assess the features, and then select the technology, then implement it with the instructional designer. When we are uh, selecting digital tools to align with learner needs, then we have to consider user-centered design. Let's involve learners in the design and development process of educational. We have to conduct a thorough needs assessment to understand their preferences and then their challenges. Many a times we just write the instructional goals without sometimes uh, taking into consideration our learners. And at the end of the day, they're not able to achieve their learning outcomes. And so we have to provide personalized learning experiences by leveraging 
technology to adapt content pace and then the strategies on individual learner needs. And then also selecting technologies to align with instructional goals, we have to ensure that the technologies are accessible to learners with diverse abilities, including even those with disabilities. They should not be left out. And then flexibility and customization to accommodate different learner preferences. Our learners are different. And so we have to accommodate all of them. Let's foster opportunities for collaborative learning and social interaction through technology. And there should be continuous feedback. Let's use technology to give feedback to our students. The learning management systems that you are using should have features for feedback. Align educational technologies with sound instructional design principles. And that's how come I keep on saying that let's not leave instructional designers out because they are key when it comes to technology integration or the use of digital tools in teaching. And then also, we have to select a technology to align with our available resources. We have to assess the existing resources. Do we have the, resource, the resources? Does your institution have the resources, the hardware, the software, or even the infrastructure, the servers? Do you have them? The learning management system platforms, are they appropriate for teaching and learning? Let's identify the specific goals or let's specific, uh, identify the specific technology needs that align with your goals and objectives. And this involves understanding the learning outcomes you even want to achieve with your technology. Because if we don't consider this, then how do we enhance the learning experience? Seek expert advice. I'm an educational technologist and I always consult. And so you should always consult. If I'm having challenges, then of course, I also consult experts. If I have to consult a programmer or a systems engineer, it's part of my work. You cannot be master of all. And so you have to seek expert advice. And then the experts will provide guidance and recommendations based on your available resources. And then always pilot or trial a technology before using it. Don't disgrace yourself and just use the technology instantly. Trial it in a smaller scale before pushing it to the bigger setting. Otherwise, it means you are going to encounter challenges. And once the technology is implemented, closely monitor its performance and usage. There should be impact on learning outcomes. And so you monitor. Conduct research to identify the technologies that fulfill your needs. And then consider the costs, the licensing fees. All these are key in digital technology integration. Hardware upgrades, which softwares are you using? And what are the maintenance expenses? Have we considered that in our institutions? Determine the key features and functionalities before achieving your educational goals. And then scalability. Let's consider how the technology will accommodate growth. The learning management systems, the softwares that we are using, the schoologies, and then the Blackboard platforms, do they accommodate growth and expansion? Because our students' numbers are increasing. Or do we want our servers to crash before we realize that we should have accommodated for expansion? Digital technology should align with our pedagogical approaches and learning objectives. And then the technology should be user-friendly. Let's not choose complex technologies that will worry our students. Because if we test them, we pilot them, then of course, we'll be getting the feedback and then we'll be able to give them the technology that is user-friendly. 
evaluate whether the technology is compatible with your infrastructure. Work hand in hand with the instructional technologists, the instructional designers, and they will guide you with the existing infrastructure and the systems and the devices and whether they are compatible when it comes to integration. Technical support and training is key. Assess the availability and quality of technical support and then train and training resources provided by your technology provider. And then also pay attention to privacy and data security aspects of the technology you've chosen. Is it a technology that is loose? I would say that can allow people to just hack into your system and have access to data because uh, if you are using a software, there should be that privacy. The costs and sustainability is key, the licensing fees, the content and resource availability, and then the feedback and assessment. Evaluate whether the digital technology provides mechanism for feedback. Gain a deep understanding of your learners, their characteristics, their preferences, their learning styles, you know, their challenges. So let's clearly define our objectives and conduct the research. Let's engage stakeholders and then continuously evaluate and then improve on our systems. Plan and design our lessons. Let's research and explore the technologies that we are using. Let's not choose them. Let's understand the features that they have. We should compare with other educational institutions that have used them. Let's start small. I think I already talk, uh, spoke about the piloting. Let's start small. If it's a software that you're using, why don't you start it with a particular class? If it's the basic level, JSS1, let's not push the technology on students. Otherwise, they will sabotage you. They will tell you that they will not use the technology. I've had an experience where I built a system and I used it to teach my master's students. And trust me, they couldn't use the technology. And they were not using it. They told me that, no, they don't understand the features. But if I had started it, with a small group, they would have given me the feedback and that would have helped to polish the software. Let's provide clear instructions and guidelines before introducing a new technology. And these guidelines will help in how to use the technology effectively. And let's encourage student engagement and collaboration whilst using the technologies. We have to monitor we have to reflect on teaching practices, seek feedback, update uh, uh, on new features. We have to enhance, engage in professional development to enhance our skills. If there's a training program, register and then learn how to use a technology. And I always say that, we always say we have digital natives. And so who is a digital native? And you answer that um, people who, are, who were born after computers. Trust me, there, were, there are people who were born before computers. And I can say they are very, they are well versed with the use of technology. And so for me, I have a problem with the digital native. It depends on the person who adopts. It depends on the person who adopts. Will you be an innovator? an early adopter, a late adopter, or a laggard? And these are questions that we have to ask, ask ourselves. And so remember that the successful integration of a new technology requires thoughtful planning, experimentation, and reflection. I will conclude my presentation with a quote from George Kouros. And he says that technology is not just a tool. It can give learners a voice, that they may not have had before. So let's give our learners a voice. And then another quote by Seymour Puppet. He says that the art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery 
And technology can be a powerful tool to assist in that art. The future of education is digital. We must prepare our students to thrive in a world that is constantly evolving and increasingly driven by technology. And this is a quote from Lee Ruane. Thank you very much for listening. And I'll stop sharing the slide. All right. I would like to borrow the words of uh, one of our participants, uh, Richard Kojo Bena, and he says, Oh my God, what <laughs> an elaborate presentation. It's been very elaborate, and I don't even know what to say. You've covered all aspects of this topic, You've actually done justice to the topic. And I want to say thank you. I've learned so much. And I know that all our participants are wowed by the depth of knowledge and insights and information that you have shared. The only thing I was just looking at was the time. And I said, thank God this is my time to webinar. <laughs> else we'd have all been cut off. Yeah, sorry for that. Was, when I oh, start it's talking, okay. just teachers and the long talk, you know. <laughs> Once a teacher, always a teacher, you know. So thank you very much for that insightful presentation. I know time is far spent. We are uh, way out of time. It's three thirty, but I'm going to give uh, our audience uh, five ten minutes if they would indulge me for question and answers. There's, there's someone who wants to ask a question. I think uh, Madame Vida still do. So if you're ready, you mute yourself. And Dr. Uh, Valentina, I would appreciate yes. it if you can put on your camera so I can take a screenshot. Sure. For... All right. Thank you. Okay. One, two, three, just give me a beautiful smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All right. So, dear participants, it's now time for questioning. And Doc, if you can turn off your camera as you really want. Okay. Thank you. So, Madame Vaida said, Eva Asiedu. You sent a message that you want to ask a question. Are you ready with your question? Okay. Okay. Well, it appears, um, Madam Eva, and here it's so. So I have a question from Mr. Clement and it says, my question is so, what's her take on the use of artificial intelligence in education? Okay. So what's your take in uh, the use of IA in education? Dr. Valentina. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. What's your take on the use of artificial intelligence in education? Yes. As uh, artificial intelligence has come to stay because um, it has the potential for trans I mean, transforming the learning experience. And it also helps in personalized and uh, adaptive learning. And so the AI tools that have come up, I made an example with the chat GPT, it can assist in intelligent tutoring. And then it is crucial, I mean, to use AI to address educational challenges. 
we can do a lot of research. We can do um, trans language translation, you know, data analysis, and even perform administrative tasks with AI. And so AI actually has to be, you know, its use has to be guided because this is, uh, let's say, um, um, a software that is using natural language, but its use for students has to be guided because it serves as a way of, you know, let's say data analysis and helping in educational insights and also crucial to ensure ethical and responsible use, let's say of data. And so AI has the power to enhance education. We can engage with AI, we can improve outcomes and prepare students for the future. Many a times people think that um, the use of AI makes uh, students lazy. For me, I don't believe in that because AI is a technology. If we channel it well as educators, it is very beneficial. I can give an example. Some few days ago, I was not feeling well and quickly I used uh, chat GPT to search for information on what is wrong with me. I'm having a headache. I'm feeling uh, nausea and this and that. And when I type, trust me, I was overwhelmed with information. And so my take is that it fosters engagement. It improves learning outcomes and also prepares students for the future. And so let's channel it into education. Thank you very much, Joe. Yeah, it's interesting that the discussion of artificial intelligence has come up because this morning on the BBC, when we were talking about digital technology, there was some school of thought which who think that this has to be very well guided and there should be regulation. And there are others who also think that it should be given room to explore and innovate. I think the key thing you mentioned here is that we have to deploy it uh, in a careful manner so that we reap the benefits more than it's becoming what a danger to us. And I think that's the question that everybody is asking. What lens will artificial intelligence come to make us better or ruin us? So I think that this was to go on and see what the lawmakers make in terms of, in terms of managing and bringing about policy to guide so that at the end of the day, it's not used as atomic bombs to kill us in this world. <laughs> but sure. yeah, it's, yes, it's an ongoing debate. And of course, people are arguing about its regulation and you know, the ethical concerns. And so we need to focus on, let's say data privacy, you know, and then let's channel it into good use because uh, collaborative efforts, let's say from policymakers, industry experts and stakeholders is key. So before we benefit from AI, then of course we should come up with uh, guidelines to its use. If it's for research, uh, just recently a colleague of mine was searching for information for her article. And of course, AI helped a lot. And then I asked her that is she, is she going to use the AI throughout? And she told me that she was able to, you know, search online. And then later on, she cut whatever she has searched for and pasted, let's say, on chat GPT. And it was able to edit all the information that she was looking for. And I was asking her about plagiarism, whether it's able to check for plagiarism. And she told me that it allows, she sent it to a journal and it's allowed for a certain percentage. And so we have to be guided. We have to be right. guided. Let's not use it. Let's not, um, it shouldn't be like we are killing ourselves over it. Let's just blend it in research. Let's blend it to engage our learners because AI has come to stay. Thank you, AI has come to stay indeed. And I think that this course will continue. Um, there are two questions, so we'll take these two questions and we can bring the sessions to a close. So, Doc, how can government stakeholders 
facilitate the use of mobile phones in our high schools without students abusing it. My guess is that government is so focused on the disadvantages, but the advantages, in my view, far outweigh the disadvantages. And this was sent by Joshua Ugu. So I'll read the question again. How can government and other stakeholders facilitate the use of mobile phones in our high schools without students abusing it? Because it looks like government is so focused on the disadvantages more than the advantage. What's your take on it? Sir? Right. Yeah, thank you very much for how the government can facilitate the use of mobile phones. It should be made a policy. If you look at mobile learning, there are lots of advantages. And it means we have to create, go on creating the awareness. We have to um, create the awareness. You know, uh, policies should change. I mean, this is a, a, GS, uh, a GPS policy and that they feel that the use of uh, mobile devices will distract the learner. And so proposals have to be written to you know, stakeholders talking about the benefits of the use of mobile devices and how we can implement their use in senior high schools. During the COVID time, when the, you know, the double track system was in place, I remember I spoke to one of my students about how you know, they are doing the shift, that is the, double, uh, the green track and then the gold track, because I was thinking that they can integrate the use of the mobile phone so that when the gold track is at home and they say the green track is in school, they can be able to learn alongside the students at home. And he was like, GES will not allow this. And so it means that the awareness should be created. The awareness should be created. For how long are we going to deprive our uh, students from this rich, the rich functionalities of the youth of mobile phones? How long are we going to do that? And so these policies should be there so that we encourage our students to keep their phones and also let's say, restricts their use, let's say, when they're in the classroom. If a student is in the classroom, we can let the students, you know, we can, uh, we will not allow students to use the phones. We should put them in lockers, for instance, because we think it will distract them. So we can just uh, introduce uh, lockers so that students- Guidelines. Yes will use them as and when it is needed. So we can give them the time that they can use the phone so that there will not be, there will not, not be distractions. Yes, so we'll have to explain to the stakeholders that. For me, I'm against this actually. So I don't think that our students should not be allowed. Let's guide them. Let's restrict the use of the phones during class time, you know, and let's, uh, integrates the phones into the curriculum. If there is no need for the phone, let's say during the um, during class time, we can put them in lockers. Thank Students you, Doc. Allow, um, there to are send other questions. Mobile phone to, I mean, the dormitories. They can be kept in the lockers. Thank you, Doc. There are two other questions which I want you to briefly touch on so we can. Because our time, our time is fast spent. Yeah. The first one is what is your take on how cloud computing adoption in shaping higher education in Ghana? What is my take on cloud computing? What is your take on how cloud computing adoption is shaping higher education in Ghana? How cloud computing adoption is shaping higher education in Ghana. Cloud you think computing, that's cloud? Yeah. Yes. Cloud computing, I mean, is another, it's an interesting field that, let's say, we can leverage on 
universities and colleges can you know leverage on camp, uh, cloud computing to enhance collaboration and then access to let's say resources and of course cloud platforms can facilitate a uh, remote learning they can also help in let's say data storage and you know support teaching methods and so they help in improving the students experiences and i'm concerned about how they can empower institutions you know to streamline their operations and so cloud help in scalability and also accessibility to the educational resources uh, students can share resources Teachers can share their resources with uh, students and students can share their resources with other, their colleagues or their peers. And so it's actually significant in higher education. We should leverage on it to enhance the accessibility of uh, educational resources. Great, thank you very much. And we'll take the last question. This is from uh, Joseph Akoho, and it says, wonderful presentation, Doc. What do you think about over-reliance on LLMS, like chat GPT by our students, especially in the setting where the program data is from high-income countries? What do you think about over reliance on LMS like ChatGPT? ChatGPT yeah. by a student, especially in a setting where the program data is from high income countries. Okay. Um, the over reliance of um, the over reliance on AI, you know, is actually can lead to let's say potential risks. It can lead to uh, potential risks and so this includes you know loss of human judgment and creativity because if you rely on ai sometimes there are certain issues that you would have you know researched on on your own you know and then also judgment and creativity but then when you rely so much then it means you are actually um, limiting yourself. You are limiting your potential to AI. When it comes to decision making, you'll be limited to AI. And I think it will not help with um, creativity and judgment because we have to strike a balance between um, the decision making and then using the AI. You have to strike a balance. And that's how come I'm saying that we have to blend it. It's a very good tool that helps in research. By the end of the day, we have to be careful about its challenges and rather, you know, think about its potential in teaching and learning. So let's not be swayed off fully into AI. Let's blend so that it will not influence our human judgment. It will not influence, let's say, our creativity. Thank you very and much, so Doc. For your answers, your presentation, and thank you all participants for your indulgence. I think we are almost 20 minutes over and above our allotted time. And I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you and give your thank you using the reactions and let's all give Doc a hand, clap of hand or a thumbs up so that she knows that we really appreciate all that she's done. Thank you very much, Doc, for that insightful presentation. Once again, I've learned so much and I know our participants have also learned so much. The feedback that has come in has been Fantastic presentation, wonderful presentation, insightful presentation. The knowledge shared here this afternoon is just amazing. And thank you All for right. that.
Yeah. Thank you so, so much for also giving me the opportunity. Thank you. So on behalf of IEP and my Director General, Dr. Michael Bwachi, I don't know the management staff, and especially the IEPA webinar series committee, we want to say a big thank you to you for coming on board when we reach out to you. And I know this is the beginning of greater collaborations between us. We are now a friend and partner of IEPA. <laughs> whenever we need you. Thank you. Yeah. Participants, we'll be sharing the slides with you in the course uh, of the week. So if you registered, we have your emails and we will send you the slides. If you still want a certificate kindly send us an email uh, using the same registration email that you received and we'll reach out to you. Until we meet again at the end of June, which will be the 29th of June, Let's keep learning. Let's keep deploying digital technologies in our classrooms. Let's see how best we can apply them and take the advantages from them and watch out for the next IEPA UCC webinar series coming up when the advertisements go up. Thank you and let's have a good evening. Bye-bye everyone.